anyway, what I did is I, I never, uh, well, I thought what it, what it was was this little thing here would be like something I could just pull out and clean, but it was not. It was actually uh, connected to wires inside. These, these ends of these things are boogered up, basically. Yeah, so if you're messing with your mass airflow sensor, do not take it out from the side thinking you're going to be able to clean it with some mass airflow sensor cleaner because these little tangs right here were actually soldered onto that board. Hey, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? Well, today my Mazda wouldn't start. Uh, it's got the 2.2 and it's got one of these, uh, I don't know, it ran fine until it parked and then the next, well, I let it set for a couple days and then it wouldn't start. So I checked the plugs, Plug, uh, plugs looked a little foul, cleaned those up. It act like it tried to start, but it wouldn't start. I checked the, pulled the distributor cap off, cleaned that, looked okay, got spark coming out of the coil, and it would act like it kind of start, but it wouldn't start. Um, I, I haven't checked thoroughly. There was actually a small vacuum leak here that I repaired with high temperature silicone. Um, I, I did recently check it for uh, vacuum leaks with uh, starter fluid to see if it would uh, up the idle a little bit. I had I had a and I sprayed starter fluid around all the little connections and uh, it didn't seem to affect anything. So I pulled this uh, this mass airflow sensor deal off and tried to look at it. So basically this is the mass airflow sensor that came off of it. <clears throat> This is a part number F2011310. And apparently these are on Toyotas and several other different uh, BMWs and some other uh, different uh, rigs. Anyway, what I did is I, I never, uh, well, I thought what it, what it was was this little thing here would be like something I could just pull out and clean, but it was not. It was actually, uh, connected to wires inside and so I cut the silicone off and opened this up I, I, I felt that and I felt it's like soft plastic so I thought I could pull that off I pulled this off and you can see kind of how this thing's set up um, but when I pulled this thing out I'm not sure if I did this or not the, the, the rig always had a little problem shifting and I'm not sure if this uh, actually works with the automatic transmission or not but um, these these ends of these things are boogered up basically and you can see that there are some connections here that connect onto this board and so what had happened was somehow these connections got like tweaked off the bottom they're supposed to these connections are supposed to all line up with this bottom here I believe and or it looks like they're they may be even soldered onto that um, yeah, they, they could be soldered on. I may have to solder those on. And, uh, and then those being soldered on, um, there is actually a possibility, I'm not sure, if this actual part right here, this part here actually touches these parts here. I'm not sure about that, but I'll have to re-solder these on, I think. Which is gonna, it's actually going to be a delicate job to do that, to make that work. Because you can see they were soldered on. You can see how they're just a small amount of solder on there. And they have very small amount on there. And so, yeah, so if you're messing with your mass airflow sensor, do not take it out from the side thinking you're going to be able to clean it with some Masso airflow sensor cleaner because these little tangs right here were actually soldered onto that board. Um, it can be re-soldered but uh, and that center, the center wire here of course goes on to here and there's an adjustment on this. Um, it seems like it's fine to me. Typically these things here we can bump up just a little bit and uh, vehicle this old, this is a 87. Uh, it, it's spring tension may lose a little bit of tension, so 
theoretically I figured maybe I could bump it up two more notches of tension and that would uh, take up any kind of slop and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and lubricate the shaft on that thing a little bit with some tri-flow and hopefully that will solve the problem thanks for watching it's almost impossible to solder that thing back together what I've done is I've used some small wires to do jumper wires across the circuit and so yeah that's that's basically what I had to do I'm still not quite finished uh, I was getting a little frustrated because I got some solder on the cross on the whatever the, the the traces and shorted the traces and so I have to clean those up a bit and then uh, hopefully this thing will be going good as new and then the funny thing is is I bid on two of them on eBay one was like uh, $53 the other one was like 35 the guy accepted my bid on the $53 one first and I had to get a hold of the other guy and um, ask him some specific details about the other one and O'Reilly wanted like 110 bucks 120 bucks plus a core return so I'm, uh, I'm not gonna buy the O'Reilly one um, I'm gonna try and rebuild this one or use the ones I've got on eBay and uh, this one actually it's funny because it's actually it has the tangs that go down on the board from the the, the plug and then it and then it, ha it also has a, a soldered uh, backup uh, so it's soldered and the tangs go to the board so it's a backup with a solder uh, there's like a small it's like a small little uh, piece of uh, wire it's not only touching the board with the tangs it's actually soldered to the tang and the board so the jumper uh, the jumpers yeah. will cover that situation these traces are like uh, hairball thin and uh, so yeah I did like uh, redesign this uh, pretty much but yeah there it is I had to solder in two tracers and I had to do a jump on a on this wire here that black that is the temperature sensor temperature sensor that little plastic thing up there on the top so anyway time to charge my battery hope this helps guys go to it